I'm still in a little bit of shock. Everything happened so quickly and out of nowhere. You know, we never thought it would grow to, to what it had grown into. As wildfires burned around him, Bosco Bay Jr. just escaped with his life. He spoke to us from the Walmart in central Maui. I mean, we were face to face with fire. I could feel the heat burning, you know, the hairs on my skin. I lost the bottom of my eyelashes. Every single thing around us was on fire, except our building, all my possessions. I mean, everything I basically, you know, have in the world at this point might be gone. For two days now, these deadly massive wildfires have ravaged the island, spurred on by hurricane winds. This was a home. Forcing thousands to evacuate. I've been here 48 years and I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. It's the deadliest wildfire to strike Hawaii, killing at least 53 people. Authorities estimate around 1,000 people are missing and fear the death toll will continue to rise. This place has felt like home from the second I got here, and I feel like my, my childhood home in town has been burnt down to the ground. Bosco Bay Jr., an Air Force vet who moved to Lahaina two months ago, was desperately fighting the inferno for an hour and a half. He says he was one of the last people to escape from the area. It was nobody on the road, nothing but darkness. Every building left and right seemed like it was on fire. Navigated around down power cords, uh, all kinds of things, and slowly were able to make it basically to safety um, after a couple miles. National Guard helicopters have been working around the clock, dropping about 150,000 gallons of water to quench the flames. The island's largest fire now 80 percent contained, but the humanitarian crisis is just beginning. Thousands displaced, shelters overflowing. The wildfire's destruction centered here in Lahaina, where my colleague Gio Benitez got a first-hand look at the aftermath. Block after block, just homes. These were once homes, amazing homes right here on Front Street. Over here, we have the famous Front Street apartments, and these are just totally burned down. Anchor David Ono of our Los Angeles station, KBC, on the ground here, too. Right here behind me is a classic Lahaina neighborhood, and as you can see, the devastation is vast. Many, many homes on this one city block have gone up in flames. The beloved National Historic Landmark decimated. Rubble covered in soot and ash is all that's left. This once bustling district, now a ghost town. Uh, to give perspective, uh, it is going to take many years to rebuild Lahaina. Aerial photos showing the lush landscape of what Lahaina looked like before and the catastrophic aftermath, smoke choking the town, now raised to the ground. When I see the aerial views of everything gone, you know, I literally see all my friends and communities and neighbors' homes like completely gone. 18 year resident Kelly Chapman's business and home also one of those heaps of charred earth seen from above. Well, I have moments of deep gratitude and moments of just absolute despair. We're working as quickly as possible to fight these fires and evacuate residents and tourists. President Biden today declaring Maui a major disaster area and mobilizing the military to fight any fires still raging. Anyone who's lost a loved one whose home has been damaged or destroyed is going to get help immediately. People who live near the road out of Lahaina, like Kayla Shaw and her family, helping their neighbors. A lot of them left Lahaina with nothing. They had absolutely nothing. They just had to run from the flames. All we can do is hold them and offer them everything that we possibly have as they transition through and figure out what's next. Shaw providing for more than 10 families now staying at her home. The Hawaiian thinking is you come from the heart and you come from the na'al, which is your instinct and your gut. And when we feel moved to help people, we don't ignore those feelings. Here they have access to the basics they lost, food, water, clothing. And in local fashion, with the aloha spirit, they're treated like family. Everyone's still in shock. Nobody revisited their homes yet, so everyone's kind of just still processing how they survived that, that experience. Shaw runs the Maui Museum, and she says what Lahaina has lost is irreplaceable. Lahaina was a huge place for our identity. And, and we think about our children and, and being able to take them back to places where, where their ancestry comes from. The things that we've lost in Lahaina is is so emotional um, because it's personal. 
Among the evacuees who jumped into the ocean to escape the blaze, a seven-year resident of the island, Sean Doherty and his girlfriend. At one point, it seemed like I might drown a little bit. I inhaled a lot of water. He attempted to get out of the water, but the hot pavement burned his feet, leaving him with second-degree burns. Sean was rescued and taken to a shelter, separated from his girlfriend amidst the chaos. He doesn't know if she survived and has no way of contacting her family. Your family lives only a mile away from us, and that whole neighborhood is probably gone, and they have two small children, so I'm really concerned about them. Sean is just one of so many trying to find their missing loved ones. My colleague Gio Benitez spoke to Stephen Scott, a Maui resident, yesterday who was desperately searching for his wife, Patricia. I know she's safe. I, I'm, I think she's safe, um, but I haven't found her yet. He's one of the lucky ones today, finally reunited. On the other side of the island, in Kula, about an hour away from Lahaina, devastation from a different fire. A tree fell over, hit the power lines, and that's what started the fire. We got all out, we got the cat. That's the most important thing. Like, everyone's safe. Sabrina Fellman's home was burned to its foundation. We bought it there eight, eight years ago. Eight it years was ago. a complete fixer-upper. We spend every weekend fixing it up. Um, yeah, we're going to start from scratch. It's fine. All that's left fits in this plastic bag. But she and her husband, Andre, had lost their wedding rings, too. Andre digging with his bare hands, trying to find them. An hour later. Any luck with the ring? Yes. One you found them. it? One of them. Both? Oh, can we see? At least one. We're still looking oh for you. Oh, my gosh. One. It doesn't look like much right now. Wow. But, but it's here. Wow. You can even see the engravings. We're good. With authorities urging people to get off the island, busloads raced to the airport, only to be stranded as flights were delayed or canceled. Overnight, many taking temporary refuge inside the terminal. Authorities still don't know what sparked the flames, but experts say low humidity, dry vegetation, and gusts of up to 85 miles an hour fueled the spread of the deadly inferno. And that's why uh, Maui County had such a hard time doing containment of the fire, and because the winds were so high, we couldn't provide the helicopters to do the water bucket support. For locals and people who grew up here, like me, Maui is simply ohana, family and home, and a living monument of the island's rich, noble roots. Lahaina was once the capital of the old Hawaiian kingdom in the early 19th century. Lahaina was the first seat of government for our ali'i. And the term ali'i is in reference to chiefs and chiefesses. So the governing class and the ruling class of our people, our Hawaiian people. Centuries of history and artifacts reduced to ashes, like Lahaina's most notable landmark, its 150-year-old banyan tree. It was the largest in the nation. We're talking historical documents, books, rare books. We're talking about also uh, the places that we consider historical in that town, churches, schools, um, cemeteries. It's hard for me to wrap my head around, you know, the, the tremendous loss. We're talking, you know, people, their their homes, their, their traditions that they have passed down from generation to generation. Hallowed relics they can't get back. Everyone needs to understand our plight. And we ask you, if you have resource, if you have a connection or a desire to kokua, support us and help us, this is the time. In the face of tragedy and devastation that now haunts the island, the Maui community resilient. Volunteers, many of whom had lost their own homes, taking care of one another as they wait to return to their neighborhoods. It's still paradise and we'll rebuild and it'll become bigger and better like anything that rises from the ashes. That's what I truly believe. Our thanks to Becky. And joining me now is Richard Bisson, mayor of Maui County. Mayor, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me on. Well, uh, I know that you and the governor got a firsthand look at the devastation. He called it a heartbreaking day. What did you see? Uh, we saw what used to be a vibrant town, full of residents, full of visitors, um, turn into a ghost town. Uh, there are no more buildings. Uh, cars are still in the road, uh, some with doors open. 
uh, indicating people uh, had to run, and what's left is very little of what it used to be. Indeed, heartbreaking. With the island's hospitals overwhelmed and so many residents displaced, you said everything's gone in that one area. What are your priorities tonight? Well, our priorities is to continue to fight fires. They they're, are not completely contained. Uh, next is to save lives, if we can. Find people who may have sheltered somewhere, if we find them. If not, recover those uh, folks that may have perished uh, so that we can bring closure to, to their families. Uh, then, of course, uh, we are trying to assess uh, the amount of uh, damage and what it, what it will take to clear the debris and to rebuild. Uh, we absolutely will, we, we will rebuild. Uh, that will become our focus. Your fellow officials have said that 2,000 rooms are needed for housing. How do you plan to get all those folks housed? Well, we have a few options. Uh, the one the governor talked about today was perhaps um, with the help of either state funds or FEMA funds or any other federal funds that are opened up as a result of the president's uh, declaration of an emergency uh, would be perhaps those hotel rooms, if we can get power and water back onto them uh, that were once uh, used by visitors. Uh, someone had a creative idea today of uh, maybe short-term rentals or vacation rentals. Uh, being used as uh, longer-term rentals for our, our residents. Well, Mayor, thank you for joining us. We know you haven't slept in days, so we wish you and all the residents of Maui County well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.